Hi, I'm Bob Mutarelli, and I've been a BERT developer for over seven years now. I hope this video helps you to create interesting BERT reports. The last video I created explained how to add a new data source to the drop-down list in the BERT report designer. Now we'll take a few minutes and expand on that topic. What I am going to show today will allow you to use the new data source as input to an actuate information object. As part of the Actuate suite, an information object is a piece of metadata that simplifies access to one or more data sources by using database tables, uh, views, stored procedures, uh, or queries, and even other information objects to retrieve data by virtue of a native query that is generated by something called the AIS, or the Actuate Integration Service. Within the developer tool, we find the data sources.xml. Now that's in the BERT Designer install uh, through the Eclipse plugins, AIS embeddable directory config. Ultimately, you wind up at the data sources.xml. Now, the data sources.xml that's contained within this file is a sample. It's right now set up for a MySQL implementation, uh, but since MySQL is now one of the out of the box supported. Uh, data connections, it's no longer necessary and is available there as a sample. It contains the uh, connection type name, uh, the location of the jar file, which is also important, and the port that that particular data source is listening on. There's also a connection type, which points to the mapping file, which we'll talk, talk about in a couple of minutes. Now, I've already created the required data sources.xml file rather than type it all out for you. I'll go ahead and copy and paste it directly into this directory. I'll just open up my edited data sources XML and point out that I have added a pervasive, the pervasive information here, including the name of the driver I'll be using, uh, the connection string. The location of the jar file that's on my machine and it is important that the development environment have that jar file locally uh, I learned the hard way that needs to be a local file so if you're working with a server installed uh, pervasive then you'll need to copy that jar file someplace local and then the data source mappings file and the default uh, port that pervasive is listening on as I said I'm just gonna copy that created data sources XML for pervasive into the appropriate data integration file, replace the data sources XML sample so that now I have the pervasive specific data sources XML in that directory. <clears throat> I do also have to create a mappings file for it and pervasive works just fine using the base mapping so I copied the existing sample base mappings directory and simply renamed that copy to pervasive. Pervasive is, of course, my example. You would use the name of the database it is you're accessing. If we look into the mappings.xml file, the only reason that you'd ever need to change anything in here is if perhaps the database that you're putting in uh, may not support certain SQL92 functions that are used by default to the implementation of uh, actuate SQL functions. So this is where you would uh, correlate those, those new functions. Now that we've made all the appropriate changes to the data sources XML, let's go ahead and create an information object. Information objects start with cre the creation of something called a data connection definition. This is where we actually go ahead and uh, tell the design tool or tell the executable what uh, data source it's going to connect to. In this case, because we've made those changes, I can select pervasive from this list. Once I've identified the data source, the appropriate window opens for me to enter the credentials necessary to connect to that data source. In this case, all I need to do is select the, uh, the server, which I'll use localhost, and the database I'll use will be the demo data database. Once I've identified those two pieces of information, I, I'm not, I don't require a username or password. I can test the connection to make sure I can reach that data, and now I'm ready to map these tables. Now, I'm going to use just the billing data table for a simple uh, example. Once I've selected that billing table as the one I want to map, I can just check to make sure that I have the appropriate uh, connection capability and I'm bringing back data. 
Now that the, the connection has been made and the table I'm going to use has been mapped, I can go ahead and create the information object. And I'll just give it a simple name, test1. And all I need to do now is drag the map of that table into the information object. And I can do many other things here, like uh, affect changes to the individual fields or select which fields I want. Or if I had selected more than one table, I could even affect joins across multiple tables at this point as well. I should also point out that any changes that I made to the uh, data sources XML and the mappings file should also be done at the server level for an information object that's going to be published to the server so that that information is available there as well. Now you're ready to start introducing new data sources into your information objects, both at the designer and at the server level.